Shimano 105, the group set of the people. Yes, Jura Ace, it's the best of the best. It's what the pros use. It features the lightest and most sophisticated materials paired with the most cutting edge design ideas. It's a tool that's designed to help the world's best cyclists win the world's biggest bike races. But this top end performance, it comes at a price and a significant one. Prices vary, but you can typically expect to pay around 2,000 pounds, euros or dollars for Jura Ace, whereas 105 is much more affordable, typically around the 650 mark. And in cycling, we often talk about trickle-down tech, the technological advancements made in top-end components like Jura Ace, working their way down to more affordable components like 105. And with that in mind, we decided to get this, the latest Shimano 105, and see how it compares to Jura Ace from over 10 years ago. This climb is an absolute wall and I'm already in my easiest gear. This is a complete Jura Ace 7900 group set from 2008, and it's mounted on this rather nice Argon 18 Gallium. It actually belongs to a chap called Guy, who's very kindly agreed to lend it to us so that we can make this comparison video. Thanks, Guy. This generation Jura Ace came out in 2008. 7900 was also the generation of Jura Ace that introduced us to DI2, although that came out a year later in 2009. And initially, a lot of the pros weren't convinced by it because it was heavier than the mechanical group set we have here. Although, an interesting note is that current DI2 group sets are actually lighter than their mechanical counterparts once you factor in the housings and the cables. The other crucial difference here is that modern 105 has hydraulic disc brakes. Much more on that later. This group set is 10 speed and the modern Shimano 105 R7000 that I'm going to compare it against is 11 speed. But before I go any further, I really want to have a poll in the app. We're going to play one of my favourite games, Would You Rather? So would you rather have a bike equipped with this mechanical Jura Ace retro group set or a bike equipped with modern, brand new R7000 105. Vote in the app because I'm really keen to see which way you guys vote. I, I really couldn't call it. What about shifting performance? Myself and Si did a blindfold test to investigate the difference between modern 105 and Jura Ace in this regard. But in case you missed it, I'm going to introduce a quick reminder now in my best American TV narrator voice. Previously on GCN. I mean that, I don't know, is that 105, is that Jura Ace? Okay. If, you, uh, if you step off to the left hand side of the bicycle. I, I promise I will let no harm come at this point to you. There you go, there's your bike. That's smooth, that. It's, it, I'm, I'm not just going off feel here, I'm trying to go off all my other sensors that I still have. And Now we were able to do that because the contact points on the two group sets are pretty much identical. But it'd be a pointless exercise here because these Jura Ace levers are so much smaller than the 105 ones. And also, this is 10 speed, and modern 105 is 11 speed. The shifter hoods on this version of 105 are noticeably bigger and a little bit longer than that on the Jura Ace. And this is because as well as having the shifter mechanics in them, they also have to house hydraulics because I'm running the hydraulic disc brake version. If you use the standard rim brake version, the shifters are actually smaller. But a cool area where there has been improvement and refinement is in the lever action of the shifters when you go to change gear. By tweaking the mechanical action and also improvements to the design of the derailleurs and how they manage the cables, the lever action 
is much lighter and the lever throw, the distance you move the mechanical lever, is slightly shorter as well. It's really cool. As a comparison, the gear changing on the old Dura Ace is still really crisp. I mean, it's like it just bang, bang. It's like, it's like you know, loading a bolt action rifle. But the lever throw is noticeably longer. I mean, you can see that, that's how far it goes. It's got shorter on the new stuff. First up, what are the weight differences between our two group sets? Well, I've got them all written down, but I'm not Rain Man. I can't just remember them off the top of my head. So I'm gonna bring in the laptop now. First up, the chain sets, okay? So, Dura Ace 7900, that's 725 grams for that five arm chain set. R7000 105, that has switched to the four bolt chain set design that we see on the current Dura Ace and Ultegra as well. Um, so it's got that, and that comes in at 713 grams. I mean, that's really amazing. This chain set, lighter, than the Jura Ace one, and it's also said to be stiffer as well, with a better design. Also has universal BCD, more on that later. Uh, the front mech uh, on the Jura Ace is 68 grams, whereas it's 95 grams on this one, so a little bit heavier. The levers are 370 grams for the Jura Ace, 500 grams for those 105 levers, but they are hydraulic, so there's a bit more gubbins crammed in there. Uh, the rear mech is 166 grams on the Shimano Jura Ace, 225 grams for this one. But again, it's a bit of a bigger rear mech. We've got a longer cage on there. So it's not all down to just the fact that it's 105. The cassette, well, that is quite a big difference. 163 grams for the Jura Ace cassette, but 320 grams for the 105 cassette when it's in the 32 tooth uh, cassette. This is a slightly lighter one because it's a 30 cassette. The chain, well, not much in that. Uh, 251 grams for the Jura Ace 10 speed chain, 257 grams for the 105 chain. And the brake calipers are 379 grams for Shimano and 287 grams for Jura Ace. That's if you've got the rim brakes. Interestingly, the weight of Jura Ace has kind of constantly been getting a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter. So Jura Ace 7800 that precedes the 7900 we've got here, that weighed 2,181 grams without the hubs. And then when 7900 came out, that was reduced to 2,052 grams. So quite a big saving there. And if you're wondering what the weight is of this R7000 uh, 105, well, with disc brakes, because this one does have disc brakes, we're looking at around 2,280 grams. But I say around because there's quite a few variables there. So for example, if you were to change the size of the rotors, the size of the chain rings, or the size of your cassette, it can kind of alter it ever so slightly. Also that weight I'm quoting you there doesn't include the hydraulic uh, lines as well, which is kind of important. And if you were wondering how this compares to the current mechanical Jura Ace with hydraulic disc brakes, well that comes in, again, without the, the cables factored in, at 1,807 grams. So, pretty competitive, I would say, for this 105. You know, it's only 200 grams or so heavier than our Jura Ace from 10 years ago. That's mad. It's, I thought it'd be more than that. I'm next going to ride both group sets up the steepest, most horrendous climb that I could find near to me. This behind me is Prospect Place near Bath. It's said to max out at 25% according to the sign, but my Wahoo regularly seems to read over 30. It is truly horrific. Now, why am I putting myself and the group sets through this? Well, hopefully for you watching at home, it's quite amusing watching me grovel on this horror show of a road. But also, I believe this is a good way to demonstrate that 105 hasn't just caught up with Jura Ace. In some ways, it's surpassed it.
This climb is an absolute wall and I'm already in my easiest gear. But these new 105 group sets are so much more versatile. The cassette at the back can be much bigger. The rear mech has got a much longer cage, meaning you can fit up to a 34 tooth cassette on. You can only get 28 on that Jura Ace 7900. Also the chain set is the same four bolt forearm spider that you've got on the modern Jura Ace. And the best thing about that is it has something called oh, universal bolt spacing, which means you can fit any size chain rings you want. And thank goodness, at the moment, I've got compact 5034, but you could put a 5339 or even a 55 on if you really wanted. Ah, oh God. Nearly at the top. Having these easier gears also means it's easier to stay seated on climbs as well, which is a bonus. Ah. So as a comparison, the older Jura Ace is much less versatile when it comes to gearing. The biggest cassette I can get on the back of this is a 28, and that's what I've got. But on super steep gradients like this, it doesn't feel like enough for a rider like me. Oh. Fun fact for you, this generation of Jura Ace was actually the first to offer a compact chain set, but I don't have one here. Oh no, I've got a 5339. And unlike the modern 105, I couldn't just swap my rings either, because it doesn't have that universal BCD. The cranks, the different cranks are different. Ugh. So if you want different size chain rings, you can't just simply swap the chain rings like you can do on modern Shimano group sets. You have to change the whole chain set if the BCD is different. But I'm gonna tell you some more. Ah, when I can breathe again. Oh God. I'm gonna talk a bit more detail about the derailleurs because that's what I'm into. So the 105 rear mech we have here we talk about trickle-down tech, but this hasn't so much trickled down from Jura Ace, it's more trickled down from Shimano's mountain bike group techs, XT and XTR. So it's got this, what Shimano calls a shadow uh, design. Now, the advantages of this are that it's designed to sit closer in to the frame by 12 millimeters, which makes it less susceptible to damage should you fall off your bike, and we know, Bikes are like toast. They always land butter side down. Weird. It's also designed to be less prone to slapping and crashing into the chainstay and damaging that as well. Again, something that's come from mountain bikes. And also you'll notice this massive long cage on here, which I said previously can accommodate up to 34 tooth cassettes. And allow me to tell you about the front mech as well, because that's really cool. Now, it's the same design as what's found on the current Jura Ace, and outwardly, it's a lot more complicated than the front mech that we've got on the 7900. But this design has a number of key advantages. This front mech design is better able to manage the front cable and dictate the angle at which it comes in to the front derailleur. On previous designs, this could be influenced by the frame you had, and then that could actually alter the shifting performance of that front derailleur, because on different frames, the cable comes out at different angles. We also have the inbuilt cable tensioner, or barrel adjuster, built in to the front mech. You can actually adjust it by way of this little grub screw here. On previous Shimano mechanical group sets, you actually had to have a separate barrel adjuster somewhere along the cable for the front mech. On our Argon 18, you can see it's on the down tube. To make sure that you get the cable tension absolutely perfect, there's a handy little guide uh, built in next to the tensioner bolt here that you can line up and it tells you when it's right and that will enable you to get both uh, shifts from both rings, but also both trims as well. And on previous mechanical group sets, this kind of required a little bit of trial and error. 
Braking is another area where modern 105 is better than old school Jura Ace. My bike, equipped with hydraulic disc brakes, they offer so much more modulation, power and consistency over rim brakes. They're vastly superior. And the calipers on these brakes are actually the same as what's found on the Jura Ace ones, pretty much. They're just sort of painted a bit differently. But uh, the rotors are different, however. They're lower spec. And according to Shimano, they're not quite as effective at dissipating heat as quickly as the higher spec Jura Ace rotors. But <laughs> irrespective of that, they still absolutely destroy rim brakes. But if we talk about rim brakes, then the modern 105 has improved there as well. The current caliper design is exactly the same shape and design as the modern Jura Ace caliper. It's just made from slightly less expensive and heavier materials. But this modern design is said to be stiffer and that translates into better braking performance. It's also a bit of a neater design and the cam lever is kept out of the wind, which Shimano reckons makes it a teensy weensy bit more aerodynamic than this one. At this time, with this generation Jura Ace, there wasn't the option for direct mount calipers either, only the single mount we have here. And again, direct mount rim brakes, if your frame uh, accommodates them, offer greater sort of stability and stiffness within the caliper and translate to better braking than a standard rim brake. And one final point about the rim brakes is that more modern calipers are designed to accommodate bigger tires as well. In this era, 28 millimeter tires weren't really a thing on road bikes. Although I reckon looking at it, I reckon you could get one in here. In other areas, the old Jura Ace does still have the edge though. So you've got really high quality materials used throughout. Things like carbon fiber on the cage of the rear derailleur and use of titanium alloys. Also, more sophisticated machining and shaping of the components. More expensive and higher quality bearings are used throughout. And there's also surface finishes on things like the chain and the jockey wheels to help reduce friction. And looks are subjective, but I think it looks absolutely superb. I love the, the aesthetics of this generation of Jura A's. And I also love that it's got kind of nostalgia attached to it. The fact that it was used by you know, so many pros for so many incredible victories back in the day. And for me, that kind of makes it a little bit special. What can we conclude from this? Which is the better group set? Well, Jura Ace is still lighter, but not by much. And it still shifts absolutely beautifully. Surely a testament to the quality and engineering, considering that it's over 10 years old. It's also probably slightly mechanically more efficient in terms of drivetrain efficiency than modern 105. But considering the specific example we've got is over 10 years old, they're probably similar now. Now 105, it shifts beautifully too. And as for braking, way superior in both rim brake and disc brake versions. It's also far more versatile with regards to gearing options on the chain set and the cassette. And when it comes to replacing worn components, it's gonna be much more friendly on your wallet. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and informative. And if you have, then please give it a thumbs up as it helps support the channel. Also, don't forget to vote in the poll. I'm gonna vote now, but I'm not gonna tell you how I'm gonna vote. Also, massive thanks to Guy for lending us, not this bike, I don't know why I'm tapping this one, but his awesome uh, Argon. Massive thanks, thanks for that, man. And get involved in the comment section and I'll see you in the next vid. Bye.